Intel has released their new 12th gen CPU, and this new CPU comes with many new features. On top of that, there is also a new motherboard chipset that will accompany the new CPU. We will be comparing the major changes between 12th gen and its predecessor in both physical and performance terms. In every CPU, there are cores and threads. A processing core is a processing unit that reads instructions to perform specific actions. Having multiple cores usually means it can perform multiple tasks simultaneously. Threads are a virtual version of a CPU core. These are utilized by Intel's hyper-threading technology, which basically breaks up physical cores into virtual cores to increase performance. However, starting with Intel's new 12th generation processors, Intel did away with the traditional cores and threads naming scheme. With this new generation, Intel adopted P cores and E cores. P cores, also known as performance cores, are physically larger, high performance cores designed for raw speed while maintaining efficiency. These P cores offer multi threading capabilities like the aforementioned hyper threading, meaning that each P core will have two threads. E cores, also known as efficiency cores, are physically smaller with multiple E-cores fitting into the physical space occupied by one P-core. A good example of this is the CPU we benchmarked for this video, the Intel i9-12900K. This CPU features 8 P-cores and 8 E-cores, which result in 16 physical cores but only 24 total threads. Each P-core utilizes 1.25 mebibits of L2 cache while a group of four E cores has two mebibits of shared L2 cache. For L3 cache, there is 30 mebibits total. Each P core using 2.5 mebibits of L3 cache and 10 mebibits split between two groups of four E cores. In short, the increase in cache means software applications can be opened faster. Intel went to a completely new architecture, moving from the 14 nanometer process that was introduced in 2016 to their new 10 nanometer process rebranded as Intel 7, which is the new architecture roadmap announced in July 2021. With the introduction of Windows 11, Intel is featuring their Intel Thread Director technology based on Enhanced Hardware Feedback Interface, or HFI which sends telemetry data to the operating system to utilize the P and E cores properly and efficiently. Basically, Intel Thread Director is a form of software optimization which helps Windows 11 effectively use the proper core that it needs. Windows 11 and Intel 12th generation are not the only new thing on the block. There is also the new introduction of PCI Express 5.0, this is twice as fast as the last 4.0 generation, which will lead to advantages in both high-speed storage and networking. It should be noted, as of now, GPUs will not utilize PCI 5.0 due to many GPUs still using the PCI 4.0 standards, such as the RTX 30 series and the AMD RX series. One thing that will be utilizing the new PCIe 5.0 is Microsoft's new Direct Storage. Microsoft Direct Storage is a low-level storage API that can load game files much quicker, utilizing the GPU to decompress files and take advantage of the faster speed and bandwidth offered by NVMe and PCIe 5.0. With the introduction of 12th Gen Alder Lake, also comes a new form of RAM, DDR5. DDR5 has some major changes over DDR4. One main change is increased bandwidth, leading to 50% increased transfer speeds compared to the last generation. However, it should be noted that latency is similar to the last generation when compared to the respective speeds. Another big change is the reduction in voltage for 1.2 volts used in DDR4 to 1.1 volts, an on-die ECC as well as increased capacity. It should be noted that while DDR5 has some amazing potential, especially with increased bandwidth and capacity, early versions of DDR5 RAM have similar gaming performance to the latest version of DDR4. Finally, 
With the new CPU generation and a new version of RAM comes a new motherboard. The motherboard we have in the current build is a Z690 motherboard from ASUS. Besides the aforementioned PCIe 5.0 and DDR5, there isn't much else new on these motherboards. The new 12th gen motherboards utilize the LGA 1700 socket, which is what all 12th gen Intel chips are utilizing. This particular motherboard we have is unique for its utilization of a screwless M.2 mechanism and latching system. It also includes a special button that can unlock the PCIe latch for GPUs. Also another welcome feature, especially with those with big CPU coolers and GPUs. Another major difference between the Intel 12th and 11th generation would be the socket size itself. Intel's 12th generation processor is physically bigger, utilizing LGA1700 instead of the traditional LGA1200 used in 11th and 10th gen processors. With this, unfortunately, current motherboards will not be backwards compatible with older CPU coolers. However, there are LGA1700 brackets that individual companies supply that can be purchased for those who want to keep their existing CPU coolers as well as new CPU coolers that already include an LGA1700 bracket out of the box. Regarding performance, we can see here in the chart that Intel's 12th gen is significantly faster than their previous 11th gen processors. For Cinebench R20 and R23, it almost doubles the performance. This is evidenced further in 3D Mark Time Spy where it either nearly or easily doubles the performance of Intel's last generation. In conclusion, should you get Intel's newest generation CPU? Absolutely. Intel has clearly made big advancements in performance compared to the last generation, and with the utilization of new PCIe 5.0 and DDR5, it is definitely worth upgrading to, especially if you're rocking older components or those that are not compatible with Microsoft's new OS, Windows 11. Finally, all the components we featured here are available at our central computer locations. If you are interested in any of these parts, feel free to swing by your local central computer and major thanks to Intel for sending us this 12th gen press kit, which was featured in this build. <laughs>